Smith's name and has come up quite a bit in the offseason so far. A lot of Chief fans are asking if we're going to get rid of him. So, and, and something we're going to have to address at some point, especially if we do bring in another receiver because it's like, okay, we have like 10 receivers in the room. Someone's got to go. Um, so, obviously, a healthy scratch in the Super Bowl. After an IG video he posted on his page saying that he wasn't hurt, along with a few expletives in there as well. Um, so he's owed two and a half million this upcoming season with a dead cap of two and a half million. So if we cut him, we're losing two and a half million there. Uh, so that's 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 something that we have to fight with. But we have 30 million to spend now, so maybe we can do that. Maybe we, we can do that. But however, with the new kickoff rules, uh, bringing the return game back, um, I personally think there could be a role for Kadarius Tony on this team with it within that. If we don't want to cut him for the two and a half million bucks, uh, but it and that's something that the team could you know decide to use him as if they do keep him around. But JD, what do you think of what? What do you think the Chiefs should do with Kadarius Tony at, at this point? C- considering all things, all the drama that went on towards the end of the last season, the healthy scratches, the drops, and just kind of the just everything. What What do you think? What What do you think is best for the team? And what do you think is best for Kadarius Tony at this point? Oh man, so okay, I forgot we was going to talk about this actually. But I'll, I'll get into it. I, I'll tell you the, my opinion, my full opinion in this, is I think Kadarius Tony is somebody who is salvageable, all right, for this season. Um, the reason I say that is because when you look at who we have on a, on the roster right now, okay, he can definitely help us. Um, we know the talent that he has in him. We know this. The fast twitch when he makes plays, he's he he's he's incredible, right? He, he can he can put it on with the best of them. Uh, he's got decent hands. He does. He got good hands. Uh, obviously, a couple of snafus and the problems and issues he did last year wasn't a good year for him at all. wasn't a good year. I don't know as far as like the whole legitimacy of this whole video. If it was doing for the Chiefs, he was saying this or New York, whatever, right? Whatever. But there is a way that you can kind of work this out, okay? And if anybody's going to be able to work these things out to guys that might be disgruntled or have a problem with an issue, Andy is your guy, okay? All right? And Andy's going to be kind of a matter of fact with you. Uh, Do you want to be here? You don't want to be here. And if you don't want to be here, then we'll just, we'll give you your release. You know, a problem with it. We'll part ways. No, no, no harm, no foul. Okay. No bad blood. We'll leave it at that. Uh, Kadir's Tony does have value. You can put him in where he can still fight for a position, fight for um, legitimate snaps on offense, and see what he does. See if he stays healthy all offseason. Is he going down to to with Pat in the passing? You know they have the little passing camp. They do all those little things. Where 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 is he in that? Right. We've seen Rasheed Rice, and we've seen Hollywood down there. Okay, they live down that way. Two guys that's dedicated to getting this thing right. I would love to see other guys in there. Sky Moore, love to see him down there too. Come down, getting work, and he, he could be. I don't know. We don't, nobody has any reports. So I, I don't think anybody, you know, this is not like TMZ or anybody like, you know, got photographers following around everywhere. Um, but the guys that you know is going to be there, they should be trying to get together as much as possible. They should be down there working out with all these guys that, that Pat is training with. Okay, having dinner and having you know drinks, drinking you know whatever Pat drinks couple of coolies couple of beers or whatever uh and having a good time um so you just i if if the relationship is strained then obviously the team would probably feel that he they, they, they need to go ahead and move off from it the thing is and it kind of goes back to what we were talking about the one the guy Big Bear, whatever his name was, when he was talking about, uh, and he had a legitimate point. 
He was saying fans. He said, look, I'm just saying to Joshua Williams what fans are saying about Kadarius Tony and Scott Moore. And I was like, it's a good point. It's actually a good point. See, because if it's a guy that we we like, okay, we, we, we'll we go to bat for him and, and oh, my goodness, you, you know, don't say it. He's good as opposed to somebody we don't like because he didn't do perform well. He's gotten hurt and those things happen that we can use disparaging marks and say he sucks and we need to get rid of him. He's a bum, this and that. Uh, and we don't know. We're not in-house to know exactly what went down, what is being said behind closed doors. Uh, we just hear a video. We don't know when that is. But you know what? If he's going to be here, hey, man, support the guy. Support him. I'm, I'm one of those. I never want to get down on a player. I don't. Okay? It's all what have you done for me lately. Can you show me that you can do this? That's what I want to see. Are you dedicated in doing that? That's what I want to know. That's what I want to know. So some of the problems and issues that they were going through last year with the wide receiver room, was he a product of that? Is he a product of maybe where they won, where they should have been? Maybe it's like when the guys that weren't working out as hard and weren't coming in and wasn't understanding everything, did put his, his full you know, line into things? I don't know. I don't know. But you want to make sure the guy's right for your team and your fit. Made sense when we went to go get him from New York because of his talents. Made a lot of sense. Yeah, can we use him uh, for a kickoff? Yeah, we could because of his talents. But still, is he a fit for the locker room? He, yeah, we want you to be a locker room guy. We we need you bought in. And so th that's the question with Kadarius Tony. I don't think there's any question to his talents. I don't have any questions for that whatsoever. It's all about durability. Is he available? Can he can he stay on the field? That is always the question, right, Marcus? It's always the question with him. If this thing comes out, so they'll they'll get it all taken care of, man. My thing is, I want to be fair to the guy as much as possible, just because. The talent, what he can do. Um, he's been hurt. Doesn't bode well for him. But hey man, if he if he's able to be a good locker room guy, and he's dedicated to what he's trying to do, I say keep him. I say keep him. So that's my whole scope on what I feel about Kadarius Tony. I do believe if he's a good guy for the organization and he likes it, he thinks he's bought in, you keep a guy like this. It ain't gonna hurt you. Why? Yeah, I mean, obviously, look. I mean, we trade for him. There, there is talent. There is talent there. I think this year was a culmination of not being on the field, which you know, according to that video, he said he wasn't actually hurt, uh, and then or his live. But then on top of that, it was the drops. On top of when he, and he when, when he was playing, he was when he was dropping balls, and then when he wasn't playing, you know, he, he wasn't there. So it, it was kind of just we never really had him. Um, and, and what's unfortunate is that whole lining up offsides whole thing. He catches that touchdown. We win that game against Buffalo. I mean, who knows? Do we we, we do we win the Super Bowl after that? Who knows? I mean, obviously the butterfly thing. We don't, we don't know. But I don't think a lot of the hate that he'd be getting, and I think his confidence wouldn't be an all time low after that game. I think that set him back a lot. Um, that whole offsides and all thing that everything that transpired after that game. I think that was going to be his like comeback. Like his confidence would be back. That, that that's taken away. People are killing him online to line up both sides. And then after that, the the Patriots uh, the, the drop re, the drops the ball up in the air. Mahomes gets frustrated on the sidelines, like I, don't, I, I you know. But like I, I think you bring up a good point. And I remember last year, everyone's like, oh well, or two years ago, Harbin's not working out with those guys in Texas. And then we find out a few weeks later he was working out with them in Texas. I yeah. think we're gonna get a key indicator if you know we still see these guys working out in Texas together, Mahomes, Hollywood, Rashid Rice, over the next few weeks before the draft. If we see other guys going there. And then we don't see Tony, and then we don't see, you know, if we don't see him, I think we're going to get a nice, that, that's going to be a nice indicator as to what's going to happen with that whole situation, with, with the way the season ended. 100%. 100%. Look, I, look, I know it. Been there before. Been there before. So uh, teams will, they'll take a chance and not take a chance on you. And like I said, they'll, they'll, it's all about can you fit? In the locker room, uh, and so I'm looking at some of the, the people talking in the, ch in the chat. Uh, about time said when Tony went online and said they cheese consult the popsicles, I was done. This is where attitude is toxic, 
It is. If he was re referencing the Chiefs, if this is who he was talking about, that is toxic, okay? And you can't have a, a cancer or a toxic guy in the locker room. I agree with you, right? And it could be frustration because we don't know. Hey, man, listen. Okay, I'm going to be 100% honest here. Could they kept him out? Yeah, possible. Okay. He might not have liked it. Right? That's been done to me before. I was put on IR. Didn't know anything about it until um, uh, Adam told me. Um, chief reporter. He's, he's still there with the team. Tysha. Yeah, Adam. And I was blindsided because nobody had told me. Now I find out in the morning when I'm coming in to get treatment. And I think this is my 2006. I think this was. And I didn't get to play in the playoffs. You're talking about pissed off. Pissed. And I went up and I said my piece uh, very respectfully to the trains. I'm like, wow, well, how does who made this decision without consulting me? And I had a look, I had a conversation with Carl and with uh with uh Herm. Herm. And like, look, you know, next time y'all decide to make a decision about my my future, please confer with me first, please. Let me know something. I don't want to hear from a reporter when I'm coming in and, and it pissed off. So yeah, that like if you think that you're gonna be a part of something and you, you know they're not, they made a decision around you. It's like, hey man, what's what's the deal? Right? But it doesn't excuse him going in and saying all of that. You're right. And I'm, I'm, and the thing is, not being toxic, you'd be pissed off. The <laughs> PTSD, yeah. For real. About time. <laughs> For real. But the thing is, if it is toxic, it's ongoing and something like it, you don't know where his heart is. Like they didn't question my heart. You can't question my heart. My heart was always dedicated to the team. I always wanted to give you another play. I always want to be part of, part of the battle. I always want to go out there and swing for my boys. That's how it was going to be, always, constantly. For this, no doubt. So that could have been it. That's that's reality sometimes how it goes in the NFL, okay? So, uh, but yeah, that, that it could have definitely happened. Uh, then I see right here the last OG talking about you can't just throw a man who just came off of surgery, miss it entirely in the training camp and preseason and expect him to play 100%. Absolutely. Like we expected a lot out of him and he was still hurt. And then when Travis was at, I think that pushed him to say, well, we got to put this guy in, right? He'd been hurt. We thought we was, he was going to get some rest. He, he was going to play, not sure if he's going to play. And he comes in and he plays, okay? Because we didn't have Travis first game. And he looked like he hadn't been in training camp. He looks like he, he didn't get a whole lot of reps. He looked like he was a little rusty. And, and so it showed. And I think it just, it was like the snowball effect, right? The drops, you know, the lining off sides, saying this, it was just like bad juju all year round for him. He just couldn't get it right. And, you know, just didn't work. Just didn't work. So hopefully you don't, that, hey, Andy's like, you know what? This that we throw that year out the window. Okay, you got a clean slate. You got a clean slate. All right. If you're dedicated to this, you coming in to work out. You want to be the best. That's what I'm going to hear. Not only hear it, but I'm going to see it. I want to make sure you're down there working out like you should be working out. I want to see it. I don't hear no excuses because if I hear anything, you're gone. That, that's that's how Andy's going to do. It's going to be that simple. It's going to be that simple. And sometimes, man, I might be a, one guy's last rock. Because the thing is, when coaches talk about this, you could forget going on other teams. If they think that you're a problem in cancer, forget it. Forget it. So I like his talent. I think he's a talented guy. I think he's a guy that you got to let play. He he definitely, he definitely uh, could help us. He definitely could help us. Time for a mentor. Yes. Hey, TGL 10. This is the reason we was trying to talk about getting veteran players in. 
right? This is this is this is how this works. This is how this works. And so Lewis cut birth. He's a proven drama queen. So Lewis, he's a young guy coming into the league. And I'm and I'm I'm just going. This is insight from an NFL football player. When you go somewhere and you don't quite know what the league, you don't know what to expect. Like I'm telling you, when guys come in, you have no idea what the league's all about. Like when you come in, you think you're going to get a whole lot of balls. You're going to be able to do this. You're going to be able to do that. And sometimes you bring some of your, your bad, you know, suitcases with you. Bring your bad problems with you sometimes. Your bad habits. Okay, that's what I'm looking for. And it's a maturation process. Well, who did he, who learned from up with the Giants? Who was up in the Giants that was like could have taught him some things? Can you can you think anybody? Kenny Galladay. Oh come on, shoot, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, bring up a name. But, but yeah, there, there weren't many veteran guys. I mean, Kenny Galladay was a young guy. No, yeah. So I, I've seen every scenario. I'm t- I'm just trying to tell you, you know, because I lived it. I've been through it. Everything, you know, he was, like the injuries. Having to deal with that, navigate that space, and then talk to the media about these things, and so he's he's going through some real issues. I mean, and, and things that can't be resolved because he really can. These things can be resolved, especially with the right person. And he's the right guy to get that done. Okay, he is. All right, he, he's like I said, and he's going to deal with it the best way he he knows how. Probably better than any other coach out there. Believe me. Okay. And he can't get it done that I don't think it, nobody else can. Um, maybe some, maybe it, it's maybe some other coaches. I, I'm, I'm not gonna say that. Maybe some other coaches for sure. But yeah, he has some drama. Young guy coming in, still trying to understand how these things are working. You know, you know, how does everybody move and operate in the NFL? It's a big deal. It's a big deal. <laughs> so man, I look, I get him right. I, I would get him right. No doubt about it, you know, because it takes a lot to talk about to these guys. How do you, you know, you know, being a pro, what do you need to do? How are you supposed to move in these spaces? You know what I mean? Um, and so sometimes if you being, if if the league just seems to certain players that it hadn't worked for them, that it's been almost like underhanded and lies that's happened to you, then they're not going to be very trustworthy of a lot of different people. A lot of coaches, there's not. They're not going to take your word for what you say. They're not going to believe what you do and stand by your word. Because other coaches have, have done him in, okay? And that's probably where the drama comes in, right? And nobody really settling down and say, hey, look, man, young pup, you can't do this, right? This ain't the way that you, you carry yourself in a professional. You don't. This is what you have to do. Uh, and it's going to take somebody to really capture him to put him back where he needs to be, okay? It takes somebody in that room. You got all young guys like they're gonna tell you you're right. If you're pissed off and saying something, oh man, you're right, you're right, man. They did you wrong. Yeah. Oh man, we want to move on from that. We don't need for you to be in one and done and at out the league. We want you to have a, a good career. I want you to be somewhere for the next four or five years to show your talent. You deserve that. Teams deserve that. Okay. You are to yourself and you are to your family and everybody else. So this is how you get it done. So I think it, it, that's what it takes. But, you know, I, I, I think it takes a particular personality to get those things done, to do that. Uh, so, yeah, I don't think we just throw the guy away. I've never been just throwing a guy away uh, unless he just make it in himself that he's not salvageable. And he's just like, look, I ain't true. Man, screw all that. I, ain't, I don't care nothing about it. Nope. All right. Well, hey, appreciate it. You know, we'll see you later. <laughs> NFL don't need nobody. Chiefs don't need nobody. Believe me, they don't need nobody. They can make in, you know, pretty much anybody walk. You know, except PM fifteen. We don't let you know. <laughs> Please don't go. Please, you know. So, so yeah, man. So that that's that's my little rant. So, what no, do you think? It has to be. I mean, it had to be addressed. I mean, at some point. I mean, yeah. I mean, the, he, he, it's a very there's two sides in this whole uh, Canarius Tony thing. Um, yeah, people who want him gone just want to rate it, rate of it. In regards to the IG thing, I just think people just think it's just kind of the end of the road. 
Um, just a healthy, healthy scratch. The Super Bowl was kind of the pinnacle of it all, I think. And, and like we said, I, I think with with Rice and Hollywood Brown and Mahomes already kind of ramping up this stuff, it's going to be interesting to see who goes to these these throwing sessions. And yeah. if we start to see guys there, and Tony's not a part of that, I think we know the ultimate answer um, with what's going to happen with that with that whole thing. Maybe not now. Maybe as we get closer to the season. Um, but yeah, he's a very talented guy, and, and honestly. It'd be great to pa- hopefully patch things up and have him and Hollywood Brown in together, two just dynamic guys oh, on, the, on the field together. It'd be so fun to watch, but I don't know. It has a run its course, maybe. I I, I don't know. Um, but yeah, we talked about it. The guy, the guy that hurt his meniscus right right when training camp starts, first game of the season. Kelsey gets hurt. Like, oh man, we need someone. Uh, Tony, get in need there. Somebody. Right, <laughs> Tony, get, like, get hey. in there. It's like, what the heck? Right. <laughs> I ain't practice. Well, you know the offense. All right. So then, you know, you, you're trying to compensate for the things, you know, from the injuries and whatnot, man. I, I just – if if he plays up into his ability, stays healthy, we'll have one of the most dangerous wide receiver rooms in the league and get an electric wide receiver in the, in the draft too. Okay. So – and you can use him as a gadget guy, and that's kind of what he yeah. was coming out of Florida. You can use him as that now. You don't need to try yeah. to force him to be your number one guy like we talked about last year, which is – oh, I always thought it was kind of ridiculous because he wasn't a number one guy. He was a guy that could be utilized in a lot of different fun ways, and I think you can still be that, but you don't have to rely yeah. on him to be your number one guy anymore. And, and that's what I think with Hollywood Brown and whoever we bring in in the, in the draft and with mm-hmm. Rasheed Rice, you don't need him to be the number one guy. Let him be the gadget, fun, the, 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 you know, the fun, clever stuff. Right, right. I'm the Brown said, JD, what if Mahomes says, I'm good? Uh, I'm good without Tony. Does Andy try to keep him? No. I, I think if Patrick says, I'm good without him, uh, then Pat, he's signaling to Andy, like, hey, man, this, this is something we can deal with. Uh, and Andy would probably listen to that. Uh, I, 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 Patrick is a, is a guy for me who wouldn't be down on anybody. If he had to deal with what he had to deal with last year, the frustration of it, he had to really find his, his peace. And like, okay, all right. But he's seen the frustration and the frustration he had to give. And he started realizing that, well, maybe I'm adding to this frustration. Maybe I'm adding to what we were doing. He had to bring his composure back, right? It was the same thing. Like I said, we don't need angry Pat. That don't do any good. Now, we need a passionate Pat. We need a guy uh, that's going to be on your team, Pat, who's going to fight for you and challenge you about things you need to do. The one talking to Rasheed Rice on the sideline, like, hey, man, catch a football. We can do that, right? But it's it's uh, it, it's going to be one of those on a positive spectrum of things as opposed to, like, just throwing you under the bus, okay? And if he does do that, you know, hey, he, you, you best believe that's a wrap. That's a wrap. Because if, if Pat can't deal with you, shoot. Hey, man, I don't think. Huh. Yeah, it's not, you know what I mean? that's not the best non-endorsement. <laughs> no, sir. No, sir. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out the best clips from Chief Concerns. And if you prefer to listen to the show, subscribe and follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and anywhere else you get your podcasts.